Welcome to the Making the Most of Your Piece of Nature series, hosted by the Pennsylvania Bureau of Forestry. In this series, we invite you to transform your piece of nature, creating a refuge for native wildlife and insects, and a place to enjoy the beauty of our native flora and fauna. today include anthracnose and oak wilt. We also look at general oak decline since symptoms are closely associated with oak wilt. Anthracnose is a fungal pathogen that affects the leaves. One of the distinct symptoms of this disease is that it starts in the lower portion of the crown. The leaf examples here are great indicators for anthracnose. Another indicator is leaf curling as depicted in the left. Anthracnose develops in the spring and early summer and the leaf tissue will appear lighter in color as the season progresses. Control for this disease is rarely warranted since the impact to tree health is minimal. However, pruning will be beneficial for better air circulation and only should be done during the dormant season. I generally recommend pruning from November to March. Fungicide applications may be used for control, but they are rarely needed. Symptoms of oak wilt are shown here in the slide. The main indicators for this includes rapid wilting and leaf discoloration from the tips. These symptoms are generally observed from June to early July. Trees will drop leaves rapidly as the infection progresses. It is common for infected trees to drop the majority of their leaves within a few weeks from infection. Here's two good examples of oak wilt defoliation weeks after infection. Oak wilt is spread by insect vectors and underground root grafts. The left picture here shows the bark split symptoms created from a pressure pad. The image to the right shows mortality by root grafts underground. We call these groupings infection centers. Oak wilt is very difficult to manage and very costly. Strategies for this control include preventing new infection centers and limiting expansion of existing ones. For the strategy, you must remove the diseased trees and trench around the buffered infection centers to sever root grafts. These practices do not reverse the symptoms. However, the goal is preventing infection from spreading to healthy trees. Fungicide injections may only be used as preventative measures. They only work on trees that do not show symptoms. Oak decline symptoms are often associated with oak wilt. The symptoms here shown are progressing dieback in the upper crown from the tips of the branches. Oak decline involves the collaboration of predisposing factors such as drought, compaction, urban stressors, and advancing tree age. It is not common for one single cause to be the responsible for decline. Finally, let's compare oak wilt with oak decline. Oak wilt symptoms include wilting and leaf drop over the entire crown with the leaf base remaining green. Mortality will set in within a year, and dieback is generally not observed. In oak decline, we will see progressive terminal branch dieback, epicormic sprouts, discoloration and wilt, but without leaf drop. Hello, my name is Jessica Pierce, and I'm a service forester working for the Clear Creek Forest District, primarily in Beaver and Butler counties. One of the questions I get asked a lot when walking in the woods is what is this black stuff and is it going to kill my tree? This is black knot and it's a fungus that's common to a lot of the backyards and woodlots throughout western Pennsylvania. Black knot can be found on black cherry trees but also plum trees and other trees in the, the prunus family as well. Uh, since most of the time I talk about black knot it's in the context of a backyard that's what I focus on here. Um, but a few questions about black knot for your ornamental backyard tree or in a fruit production setting, uh, I recommend you talk to Penn State Extension. The primary symptom of black knot is this black knobby growth on your black cherry tree. Uh, it's usually found on the stems of your tree, although it can be on the main trunk as well. In general, it's going to reduce the vigor of the tree, but it's not usually going to kill your tree. Primarily, it's an aesthetic issue. Uh, where we see the most issue with the black with black knot is if you're going to use your um, trees for lumber or you're trying to try to sell it for timber 
when you have black knot in the main trunk of the stem, it can reduce uh, the quality of that potential lumber. Uh, it can also lead to more breaking uh, because it's a weaker spot in the tree. A very common question that us service foresters get from people is, what's wrong with my pine tree? And the first step to figuring that out is to know if it actually is a pine tree. Uh, a lot of people just lump all the different conifers together, whether it be a pine, a spruce, a fir, uh, and some other ones. Uh, they're all just pine trees, but they all have different um, problems, different challenges, and they're all different situations. So it really doesn't matter. So for example, right here in the corner of my backyard, you're looking at a white pine tree. That's a very common tree here in Pennsylvania. And uh, right next to it, is an eastern hemlock. See the top up through there? So that's a very common tree, a native tree. It's our state tree. And right next to me here is a row of red pine trees, also quite common. And back there in the back in the center is a Norway spruce. So right here we have four different kinds of conifers. Uh, only two of them are actually pine trees. You may wonder why it matters so much if it's actually a pine tree, or is it a spruce, is it a fir, is it a dawned redwood, is it a bald cypress, is it a larch? Uh, this all matters very much because they all have different characteristics and different disease problems. Uh, some things are common to them, which I'll talk about later, but uh, it matters very much. White pine has numerous diseases, they're fungal diseases, and they have started up in the New England states a number of years ago and they have spread down into Pennsylvania. The Scots pine, for example, uh, they often die when they get around 60 or 70 years old. Uh, diseases get them at that point, but the diseases aren't the problem. They have just uh, reached their lifespan, pretty much. And so at that point, uh, they are old and and susceptible to being sick. So the Scots pine can have uh, problems like that. White pine on the other hand can live for hundreds of years. There's another Scots pine over in the distance there. Um, larch, bald cypress, and dawn redwood for example, they lose their needles in the winter. They are a deciduous conifer and we get calls sometimes in the fall asking about the uh, their tree died, their pine tree died and actually it was a larch or dawn redwood or bald cypress and they lost their needles for the winter. Perfectly normal and natural and the tree will be back next spring just fine. Okay, here I'm under the, one of the white pine trees and you see the ground is covered with needles and you've all seen that, you're familiar with that. And some people uh, see the needles turning brown in the fall on uh, these other pine trees, other conifers and they think their tree is dying and uh, know they're uh, doing their perfectly natural thing when roughly a third of the needles die each year and fall off and then they're replaced with new needles the following year. Uh, it just happens that the large bald cypress uh, and dawn redwood lose all their needles in the fall but the other trees uh, lose roughly a third. So they're a deciduous conifer, perfectly natural, no problem at all. Okay, I haven't mentioned blue spruce yet, Colorado blue spruce, but there you're looking at the top of one, a uh, beautiful tree, uh, my favorite Christmas tree actually, in spite of the picky uh, sharp needles on them. Uh, however, the blue spruce all around Pennsylvania, especially here in northwestern Pennsylvania, have been dying for a number of years now, uh, subject to two uh, fungal diseases, and there really isn't anything you can do about it. So I'm going to go down for the top of this tree and you notice right about there the green needles stop. We're still 20 feet off the ground. Coming down across the rest of the tree. Brown all the way down. So the two diseases are Cytospora canker. That's C-Y-T-O-S-P-O-R-A canker. And there's nothing you can do about that disease. 
It's a native disease. However, these trees are not. They're Colorado blue spruce, so they're from out west. And the native diseases uh, get to them, especially after the trees are about 20 to 25 years old. That's when they really become susceptible. And the other disease is called Rhizosphera needle cast, R-H-I-Z-O-S-P-H-A-E-R-A, -E needle cast. And in theory, you could spray a uh, fungicide for that disease. That would help. But how do you spray a tree that's 30, 40 feet tall? If you catch it in time, you can delay the process by pruning off some of the bottom branches that are diseased. It'll start at the bottom of the tree and work its way up, as this did. So if you prune those bottom branches off, uh, it will delay the process, but it won't change the end result. So that's unfortunate. Uh, the blue spruce are a beautiful tree, but they just aren't well suited for this area. Hi, my name is Jessica Pierce and I'm a forester in the DCNR Bureau of Forestry, Clear Creek Forest District, working primarily in Beaver and Butler counties. One question I'm often asked when working with landowners is what is this green stuff and is it killing my tree? Luckily the answer is no. This is called a lichen. Lichens are complex and interesting organisms made up of both a fung fungal component and an algae. Lichens come in all different shapes, sizes, and colors. And in fact, there are over 3,600 species throughout North America. Lichens around here in western Pennsylvania will grow on trees, but you'll also find them on rocks as well. Lichens, like I said, don't hurt the tree or help the tree, but they can provide nesting material and food for wildlife. Lichens are also known to thrive in areas with good, clean air. So if you have a lichen on your tree, it's actually a good thing. So enjoy the lichens and the green color they provide throughout the winter. Uh, if you have any questions about lichens or other insect, disease, or tree issues, feel free to reach out to your DCNR Bureau of Forestry Service Forester. Thanks. The most common cause of stress in young trees is lack of water. Young trees should be watered 20 gallons per week throughout the growing season. Another stressor of young trees is damage by lawnmowers and string trimmers, which can girdle the tree or cut off the flow of water and nutrients. Poor planting can also lead to death in young trees. The top two thirds of burlap and caging should be removed before planting. And the roots of containerized trees should be spread out so that they grow out as opposed to around the trunk of the tree. Thank you for joining the Pennsylvania Bureau of Forestry for our Making the Most of Your Piece of Nature video series. If you're interested in learning more about this topic or others, please visit DCNR's website where you can find information on landscaping with native plants, invasive plants, and a list of service forester by county. Your service forester is a free resource to help you make the most of your piece of nature.